Tutorial 20, Part 5. We are continuing our journey from the two ends of the spectrum that we've already set up, which are our wide open and our totally locked down server. So we've got both ends of the spectrum now. Now we want to start filling in some grey areas. One of the most common rules um, that first appears in a lot of IP table configuration scripts is about the loopback uh, interface which exists on all Linux systems. So the loopback address is 127.0.0.1. It's also localhost or localhost.local to main. But it is used for inter-process communication. A lot of people use it for that. It can be used by MySQL. Um, and it's a very useful interface. It is not an IP address that can ever be used on the internet because it's a reserved IP address. So it doesn't represent a security issue to have a server that is sending itself essentially messages. And as you've just seen here, we've pinged it and we are in total lockdown mode. And total lockdown is what it says. I mean, it is absolutely drop everything. We're not allowing anything, not even a ping on the local host. Um, so that's not a good situation to be in. So maybe the first element now, not maybe, it will be, the first element that we're gonna cover is how do we enable the loopback interface? So the first pinging or indeed any traffic on that uh, loopback interface we wanna allow. So we wanna do it by interface. We wanna say, on the loopback, we want to accept inbounds and we want to allow outbounds, but it's only for the loopback. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to meld that within uh, the allow file. I won't have a specific allow file for this, but I'm going to copy total to allow ping because we're going to add to this in the very next segment. So. If I VI allow ping, it's exactly as lockdown, I'm going to create a couple of spaces in here. Um, what I'll do first is maybe we'll just add a little step one total lockdown, whoops, with 1C lockdown achieved. Oh. Definitely got typeitis all the time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the loopback first. So to do this, we need to add rules to that, to the chain, to the input chain first, and then the output chain. So what do we want to say? Well, we want to say it's an IP tables rule. And this time we're going to append a rule. What are we going to append it to? Well, we're going to append it to the input chain. And I'll do these logically as input then output. And I'll try and stick to that as much as possible. There are almost infinite number of ways people write these files, but I'm trying to make this as stepwise as possible. So first we're gonna add or append a rule to the input chain, which is gonna work in addition to the drop. So it doesn't mean replace the drop, it's in addition. And this is where we can have our exceptions, which we will be having an awful lot of exceptions as we go through this, because we want to allow different traffics. And if you saw the title of, uh, and you watch part one of tutorial 20, we're going to be allowing FTP, HTTP, um, SSH, ping. So we're going to be adding exceptions to the drop. So, IP tables append an input rule. There's many ways of doing this. I've seen the minus I um, LO, um, which is fine, but I, I like to spell it out because minus I is a shortcut for minus minus in for interface and then interface itself, LO, minus J. What's the jailing rule? Well, it's going to be accept. We're going to accept input on the loopback interface. The interface LO, we're going to accept inbound. 
Fabulous. So that's great. You're going to accept it. If we if we do that and leave it at that, and then we do dot slash allow. That's fine. Step one: total lockdown achieved. And if we go ping 127.0.0.1, we're still verboten. Why? Well, we haven't got our opposite. We haven't got our output rule. So I want to yank yank that, put it, but this time we're going to append to the output. Remember, it was permission denied, Did it just verboten completely, not allowed. So now we're saying append a rule to output. In. Well, it's not coming in, it's going out on the interface. So, out on interface. This is in on interface. And this is why I like to do, um, again, you could do, just for the purposes of showing you, I've, I've seen people do the exact same thing or the same effect is to go minus O, L, O, minus out. Um, I like to lay it out just because then when somebody else reads this script, they will see it's out on interface, L, O, accept. So we're allowing it. And then just for the purposes of uh, completion, let's say this is step two. Um, loop back interface access enabled. Something else to point out here, I guess, is I haven't actually said what port or what traffic type, which are some of the things we'll be coming on to. And I haven't done that purposely because I, you know, I guess A, I'm trying to keep it simple at this stage, and B, um, I don't really mind because this is the loop back. It cannot be pinged or accessed, you know, externally across the internet. Um, it won't be forwarded at 127.001. You know, it's already pretty safe. Um, well, in fact, it's very, very safe. But what I do want to do is I want to cover all possible aspects of ports and traffic that may use the loopback interface on this server at a later date. So that's why I haven't specified any particular port or any particular protocol. I've just said, you know what, anything coming in on loopback, in interface loopback, take it, accept it. Anything out on interface loopback, again, accept it, go for it. So those are the two rules for the loopback, and they're the most common rules that people set up on IP tables. So, will this now give us what we want? So there's total lockdown achieved, loopback, and then we can see it's saving the rules, setting the chains, but it's now set a filter. Those appends are filters to the policy. So, if I now go ping 127.0.0.1, we're getting a ping. Fabulous. If I go to any one of our other two machines, and I go um, and log in, whoops, they were still doing their pings, and I go ping IPT server, hanging, of course it is. I haven't said anybody else is allowed. On its private, of course it's hanging. Absolutely. It's still in total lockdown. The only thing we've added is the loopback can talk. So the machine can do inter-process communication through the loopback port. So that is how we enable the loopback. Now, we want to get this machine, uh, client two, and we want to get client one talking, pinging with this machine. That's what this ping one is about. So now we're going to move on to allowing pings from specific machines. So we're going to do pings from specific machines. I've just cleared the screen. Uh, we'll do a dot slash allow. We'll just double check our, uh, our loopback is still going as planned. Of course it is. Um, and we're going to vi allow 
minus ping, which was the whole point in this particular tutorial 20, part 5. Um, what I want to do is create a bit of space here, and I want to grab my hash, and I want to put myself in insert mode and just paste that in and make a few lines here. So, why have I done that? Well, I want to start making the distinction between public interface and private interface. So I'm just going to grab that as well, copy that, back in insert mode and paste. And this will be about the private, which we'll do in just a second. So, on the public interface, we now want to allow access to a particular, um, from a particular host machine to this machine. What host machine? Well, IPT client one, for want of a better uh, machine. And we can go to client one. Um, let me just log into us. I know you can't see it yet. On client one. And we want to ping IPT server. And we know we can't get through. So I'm going to just leave that hanging there. Yeah. Um, so it's going to keep trying. So what do we want to do? Well, to enable ping, what do we want to do? Well, pretty much what we did up here, except we want to talk about a specific protocol. Um, so I'll tell you what I'll do first. I'll do allowed equals um, ipt-clt1-pol, because it's going to be on the public interface. So it's the public IP address. Having identified our allowed machine, our rule is going to be IP tables minus append. And we've got an input rule. And it's on interface ETH0. And in particular, it's the protocol ICMP. And even more importantly, it's ICMP minus type. The type of message is uh, an echo request. And we want to allow an echo request, and you, you can either type in echo. In fact, why, why don't we do that? We type in echo request. Its numeric is uh, number eight, if I remember rightly. We're going to take an echo request, and I'm going to minus J, our rule is accept. That's good. So we have an input rule. So we will accept ICMP echo requests from ETH or on ETH0. But we want to add to that. We want to say it's from a specific host. And in this instance, it's the one we've defined as allowed. Now we want to say, we want to have a rule that says, because that, that's fine, you, you've accepted it inbound. Um, what about outbound? So a request comes in, and we want to append an output rule on the outbound interface, ETH0. The protocol is ICMP, and this time the type, the message type, the ICMP type, is an echo reply, a minus J accept. So, that looks good. Let's run that. Oops. And see what we get. Oh look, it's already begun from the minute I hit return. So we're getting an inbound echo request and we're able to send an outbound echo reply. Fabulous. 
So that's now running away there. In fact, I will show you that I will just do a control C, start it again, that's fine, control C. So, excellent. Can we ping then IPT CLT1 on our public interface? Yeah, of course we can't. We haven't given any rule whatsoever to say we as a server are allowed to send an outbound ping request. We've said we'll respond to inbounds, but we haven't allowed the server to start sending ping requests. And that's not the worst thing in the world, but that's, you know, we can add that and that'll be fine. But all we're doing at the moment is taking inbound, is defining what we're allowing to come to our server. Now, we've enabled, um, we've enabled that for client IPT1, but does that mean client IPT2 could snook in and actually ping this server? Of course it doesn't. We specifically said minus S. Now if I leave that up there, and I'll, I'll put it in, in front in a second, if we VI the file and we take out the allowed, in fact, what I'm gonna do is Yankan can put that because it'll save me doing this in a minute. Just want to show you the power of this. So we're going to go in here and we're going to take out the minus S. Now, can I find a way of keeping these? I'm just going to hit simultaneously hit return and drag that in. Oh, look. Oh, oh. Yes, indeed, without the minus S, these machines, any machine, any machine at all. In fact, if I bring up a new terminal window from my actual host Mac machine here, and I ping 192.168.0.118 it was on, it's wide open to pings from every quarter. So that was just to emphasize for you that that minus S is the key. That minus S is the key to making sure that you have security on this machine. So let's put it back the way it should be. X that and get rid of that. But that also gives you an insight there into how you would create an overall, allow an overall ping. Just take the minus S allowed out of there. So now we want to enable, we want to go a little bit further and enable pinging on the private interface. So um, if I just do that and we go down to the private interface, well, let's take that line YY and P and then YY and P. We want to do a very similar thing on the private interface. So once again, on the private, we're able to uh, ping the server, that's fine. Um, actually, I wanted to put this back the way it should be. We can very quickly do that again in a sec, just to show you. So can we ping IPT server on the private, no, nothing allowed at all. Similarly, from our other client two, ping IPT server on the private, no, of course it's not allowed. That's fine, I'll leave those two hanging and then we can VI our file here. And I want a Yank Yang can put, and a Yank Yang can put. Because the rules are very, very similar, as you're starting to see, I hope. So what's the interface this time? Well, the interface this time is ETH1. So let's make it ETH1. 
What are we allowing? Well, we've just seen a second ago. We're allowing everything. Everything at the moment. And outbound, ETH1, echo reply being allowed. So if I now do a dot slash allow, look, look what's happening. All our pings, they're all going. Where do they go? Um, I'll bring up my terminal again. And my terminal window is, there it is, from my Mac machine here. Um, ping 10.0.2.15, there it is, being allowed. Lovely. So I'll leave those all running, running their constant pings. That's not quite what we want because we're allowing, like we just tempted ourselves a second ago with, we're allowing everybody, everyone to have a go at this machine in terms of pings, um, which isn't what we want. We, we don't want to allow that. We want to allow certain machines on our little private network that we have. So how can I actually stop um, my host machine, uh, my Mac, from actually pinging this address, and, and, or indeed any other machines as well? So what we want to do is do a match. And we're going to do a match on an IP range. And the source range is going to be 10.0.2 dot now the reason my mac can address this is of course vbox has created a 10.0.2.1 so we want to match it from our three hosts are 15 16 and 17 so let's say we go from 15 to 10.0.2.80 or 70 we'll go from 17 because that's our three machines. And it's a minus J accept. So let's see what happens when we run this. Our pinging here is still going on. Our pinging here is still going on. Where's my terminal? Look at what's happened to my Mac. Because we've made the range only our three private network hosts, we've locked out my Mac. We've locked out anybody else who isn't 10.0.2.15, 16, or 17. And this is really, really, really important. We have allowed a range. Now we can make that range broader, you know, that's fine. It's, it's standard IP ranges. So you can choose an entire class A, you can choose an entire class C. The point being that in our file here, if I go back in here, we very quickly got to the point where we're allowing client one to ping this machine on the public. Let's go to client two and ping uh, IPT serve. It cannot ping it. On its public address but it can ping it on its private address so again we're using the facility of those two IP addresses and in you know within four lines here we have set our machine up to be highly secure from a ping point of view um, and every other protocol because we haven't allowed anything else into this machine we have the loopback working two rules there we have the public interface working, two rules there, and we have the private interface working, two rules there. So within six lines, we now have highly secure pinging allowed from only the machines we want to allow it from, and only on the interfaces that we want to allow it from. That's it for pinging. So we've got our allowed ping. Um, I could cover outbound ping, but you know, I, I don't really care about outbound pings. What I'm about here is protecting our server inbound. Um, you can probably work out already from these rules uh, what the outbound ping is. But 
I want to now cover how do we log into this machine and move on to SSH. Moving on to SSH in just a sec, I did think as well when I was looking at this just now as I was about to move us on, um, what I didn't do was just add quickly to add our descriptors so that we know where we stand and what the hell I might as well add outbound um, uh, pings as we're at it. So that'll be step three, that'll be step four and in step four here this is whoops Step four, um, this is uh, private, private interface, um, inbound, I'm going to put this in uppercase, inbound ping enabled, and up here We'll just make this public interface inbound ping enabled for one host. I just want to have those so as we build out the file, as it grows, we will have our um, our actual copy to go on GitHub. So, um, what do we want to do as well? Yeah, I said I was going to just cover this, why not? Um, very quickly, as I've had to make another part to this, we might as well go public and private interface. Um, this will be, we're going to allow this machine to ping the outside world. So, in order to do that, we're going to basically do the reverse of this. We're going to say IP tables and we're going to append a rule outbound. So, we're the initiator. Outbound, output. Sorry. Output. And I don't care about which interface it's on. I'm just going to allow it on both interfaces, but I do want to say that the protocol and limit it to the ICMP type is going to be an echo request so we are making the echo request and it's outbound and we want to allow it and then we want to say IP tables because of course we've sent a request out we want to allow the echo reply back in so minus P, ICMP, minus minus ICMP type. We want to allow the reply in. Echo reply. And this is on either interface as well. Whoops. B, B, D. So that is how you would get your, um, your outbound pings going. I'm just going to again put a little comment above our um, restart the services. Just trying to build this file out so it's nice and readable. Restart IP tables service. In fact, it's a bit more than that. Save and restart. Lovely. So let's just go and check that, shall we? So ping um, IPT CLT one dash um, private. Yep, there it is. Hub. Yep, perfect. And again, just to check that we haven't by accident enabled. So this is client one. We haven't enabled the wrong thing. Let's do a ping private. That's working. Ping public. 
IPT, oh, ping the public, that's fine. Um, and then we want to go to client two. And this one should not be able to ping the public. And it can't. So we haven't accidentally enabled something else, but on the private it can. So that's perfect. So we have all of our ping rules working um, from this machine, outbound and inbound we're allowing client one on the public, not client one, uh, not client two, and we're allowing both client one and client two on the private. So that's how you set up ping. Um, we are definitely moving on now to SSH.